In this video I'd like to talk a bit about net ties, which are really useful for schematic and PCB design, and in particular to help the person when it comes to PCB layout. I'm very happy to announce that I'll be creating content also for Altium Academy, so make sure to subscribe to the Altium Academy YouTube channel for more content from Zach Peterson, myself and others. I'll also be writing accompanying blogs to those videos on resources.altium.com, so please make sure to check that out. Thank you very much to Altium for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to give Altium Design a try for yourself, you can go to altium.com forward slash yt forward slash Phil's lab, the link is in the description below, to get yourself an Altium Designer free trial and 25% off your first license purchase. To help you out with your free trial and to see how Altium Designer works in detail, I have a full STM32 PCB design walkthrough guiding you from project creation to getting your PCBs ordered and manufactured. I'll leave the link to this in the description below. In essence, net ties, as you see in the middle of this schematic here, tie, as the name suggests, nets together. In essence, they're just a short circuit. However, they're really useful because they convey meaning in a schematic and a PCB layout. For example, this net tie in the middle here ties this feedback node of this switching converter to the main output voltage after the LC filter. This would be the alternative connection without a net tie. You can see this feedback node, pin 28 of this converter, is tied directly to the output of the LC filter, which is at 1.0 volts. In our PCB editor, or when we're doing PCB layout, pin 28 would simply be called 1.0 volts. However, also the output is 1.0 volts, which could cause confusion because this feedback node is rather important and needs to be treated differently than just a normal 1.0 volt power node. Putting the net tie back in place, as I've done here, essentially just a short circuit, and we'll see how to create these in a library later on. This will just simply short pin 28 to 1.0 volts, but it allows us to give these two sides of the net tie different net names. This really is useful and conveys meaning for the PCB layout engineer. Because we take 1.0 volts, we feed it through this net tie, the short circuit, and then it allows us to call our feedback node by a certain name, for example, buck feedback one. It might be a small detail, but this is really important, especially if not the same person is doing the schematic design and a different person is doing the layout. I mentioned this on the channel several times, but this is incredibly important also then to label all of your nets. So every single net in the schematic has its own label. And you can see I've used net ties in multiple places, for example, for these feedback networks. So let's see how we can create a net tie, which is essentially this fake schematic and PCB layout symbol, or rather just named for a short circuit with different net names. Let's see how we can create that with a library of our own. So net ties come in various flavors. We can create through hole, SMD, different sized schematic or net ties. Let's just make a really simple one. We go to our schematic library. I've selected mine here. Then go to tools and new component. I'll just call this net tie SMD. Very simple and click OK. Then I can press the P key to my keyboard and click on pin. And this places a new pin. I press tab. This brings up the property menu. I want my designator to be one and my name to be one. We'll later hide on these designators. So I'll press space to rotate and I'll place a second pin connection over here. So these are the two sides of my net tie, pin or pad one and pad two. Then I can do, place a drawing tool by pressing P and then line and just connecting these up. And this is all there is to this net tie, at least for the schematic symbol. Of course, you can have different schematic symbol types. You might want to draw a little box around it, but the simplest net tie would look something like this. Design item ID, what is called net tie, and designator is typically NT question mark. And NT question mark will then be filled in with annotation. In the description, we'll just call this a net tie. Type, this is important because this will then help us when we do our design rules later on that we make sure, okay, they are different nets connected together. We don't want this to be a DRC violation. So we do a net tie and we do no bomb. So it doesn't appear on the bill of materials because of course this is a virtual component, so to speak. We also need to add a footprint and you can add various parameters if you want as well. For this net tie, it isn't that important. So let's go over and make the footprint. To make the footprint, we have to move over to our footprint library in Altium Designer. So now I have my footprint library open. I need to add a new footprint. So I go to the top bar, click on tools and new blank footprint. On the left, you can see we have a new footprint component. I can click edit and I'll just call this net tie underscore SMD and the type is a net tie. Click OK. Now we need to place two pads and we're trying to make a fairly generic net tie. So we have to choose, you know, fairly generic pads and a track between those connect them. The way we do that in Altium is press P, then P again or click on pad, then press tab to bring out the properties menu and designator will just fill in as one. And the layer is the top layer because this is an SMD surface mount pad and we want the shape to be rectangular for this net tie, for example, and I'll just change that to one millimeter squared. 
So a very, very small net tie because that's its only function is to connect up two tracks and the tracks could be smaller or larger. So I'll just place one and Altium already increments the pad number to two and there we go. And then right click to cancel the command. So this performs the base of our net tie and now of course you have to connect them together. The way we connect two of the same pads together is essentially with the copper fill. So press P and then click on fill. We can drag out some sort of fill like this and then move it to the center and make sure that the edges of this copper fill do not snap to the center of these pads. So something like this seems okay. And this is all we need to then create our net tie. Typically you might want to add some sort of information, for example, designator, but for net ties, I don't think it's too important because these won't be you know, assembled anyway. Keep in mind, these are now seen as pads. However, we want them still to be covered with solder mask. So if we go to the top solder layer, you can see the solder layer is a negative or an inverse layer. The solder mask will be removed over these purple locations. We want to get rid of that. So we can go to the top layer, select both of our pads with shift, and then solder mask expansion will set to manual. And you, know, you can just set that to minus 10 or something like that. Then we go to the solder layer, and you can see the solder mask will be covering all of this net tie. And that is what we want. We don't want exposed pads just because it's a net tie. So we can save that return to our schematic library and then we need to assign the footprint so in the properties tab on the right side i can click add footprint choose my model name which is net tie underscore smd click ok click ok again save that there we go now we've created a design item called net tie smd we've assigned a designator comment and importantly of course selected the type that it doesn't show up in the bill of materials that's all there is to create a net tie if i want to include that in my schematic i go to components choose my library and then just drag that in. This is my net tie symbol. Typically, I will then hook that up to some components. Of course, we have to add a designator, but once you've done that, once you've filled in a value, I quite like to hide the comment and the designator because it's not important what that value is. It's pretty clear that this is a net tie. If you want, of course, you can hide the pin designators as well. So that's all there is to it. Let's move over to the PCB design. So now I've opened my PCB design document. You can see I'm still in the layout phase and we want to look at the buck converter, which I've placed on the back side of this PCB. Remember, this is where I've had some of my net ties. If I click on two, then zooming in, finding pin 28. Remember, this was our net tie pin or one of the feedback pins. And this now really nicely for the PCB layout engineer is not called 1.0 volts, which it ultimately connects to, but rather it's called buck feedback one. So I can root out buck feedback one, and here's our little net tie from through the net tie. Essentially, the net name gets converted, so to speak, to 1.0 volts. And then that'll hook up to the output at these filtering capacitors down here. Here's the scenario if we didn't have this net tie. So we don't have this net tie here anymore and pin 28 is now called 1.0 volts. And to the PCB layout engineer, it makes it less straightforward to see what this pin does. It's a subtle detail, but I think something that's really important. Now this is just called 1.0 volts. Is this a power pin? Is this an output input? With a net tie, pin 28, we see it's a feedback pin. And this is incredibly important. So you can use this for power, we can use it for determination resistors, anything where you want to convey meaning. By going to routing, in Altium I press Control W to start my routing process. And normally if I root out, for example, with a pin, you can see because 1.0 volts and buck feedback one are so close, Altium doesn't like it. It doesn't want to root in because we have, of course, our design rule constraints. So what I need to do is press Tab and in this conflict resolution on the right, change to ignore obstacles. Then I can root out of my pin into my net tie and then out of my net tie again. And I can even connect these two up. And there we go, now we've hooked up buck feedback one, which is essentially 1.0 volts, but it has two different net names. And then we can connect that later on to 1.0 volts as output. So I hope that illustrates quite quickly how to use net ties, how to create them in schematic and footprint libraries, and then what they are useful for, for conveying meanings in schematics. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.